What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi coach and give me six months of your time and I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. Whoa. So welcome back to the channel guys. As you can see, we have another lesson with one of our clients today. This is gonna be a really exciting lesson. I think you guys are really gonna love it. So let's have him introduce himself. So to get things started, let's kind of hear, based off last lesson material, as well as even if it's just not really related to last lesson material, let's kind of hear what he wants to talk about today in today's lesson, and then also after that, I'll analyze the swing and get going. クラブさばきというかその部分がちょっとまだ難しいなというのもあって練習はしてるんですけどその部分はちょっと今回教えていただきたいかなというふうに思ってます。Understood. Yeah. Understood. So then let's analyze the golf swing. I think the first place is when we're having difficulties if we're doing it or not, it's best to check to see the checkpoints first. So let's go ahead and get into the checkpoints of alpha rotation. The first checkpoint is going to be right around this kind of position five. So specifically alpha, you know, you can go in a flattening sense. So let me draw an arrow here. So, you know, alpha could be this direction as well as it could be this direction. So what we're checking for specifically is kind of ranges. So if we have our classic P5 uh, checkpoint is Sanju go to Yanju. So I would say here, you know, one degree off, okay, right? Nothing too terrible there. But for the audience at home, that was never really the issue. It was really more so kind of from P5 to kind of P5.5. So actually before at home, he was getting a little bit more this way, especially with the driver he was getting underneath the plane. So this, if anything, is slightly on top of the plane. So the ideal range would be anywhere from kind of top of the forearm, maybe the middle of the bicep would kind of be where we want to be. Mm. So with the irons, what you might find if you start to get too vertical is the low point starts to shift a little bit more ahead. So maybe he can start to get some fin shots or maybe last second he throws the club into the ground and gets a duff. So if he's getting some of those strikes currently right now, this could be a reason why and something we'd want to target. Not mm. only. Yeah. So now when I analyze your golf swing, and this is kind of hard for just someone who's not a coach, but when I analyze it, I actually don't think the steepening move is the issue here in terms of the shaft being out of position. It's more so the direction of the hands. I think it just took a little bit too horizontal of a path out towards the golf ball. And that's actually shifting the overall direction of the shaft a little bit too steep. So if we can just get the hands to move slightly different, I bet you and almost guarantee you that we'll see the shaft start to align much better if we change that. Mm. To make it simple, you are definitely alpha rotating. That's for sure. Yeah, I just don't think um, there's two parts of the equation with that move. It's where the hands are moving relative to the alpha. And that was the issue right now. Mm. And then at P. Roku, that's kind of the telltale sign that the hands might be an issue is when you kind of look at the direction of the arm. Uh, yeah, a little bit out, a little bit left. 20 degrees is by no means a crazy, right? We've seen people like way over here before, so this is not so crazy, but we like the 15 degrees or less is kind of that range with the lead arm. So the hand path is just a touch on top of the plane, and then that's getting like Piroku point go, also a little bit on the outward side. So you're probably gonna be a little bit more than 30 degrees. Yes, yeah, so you're about like 37 degrees. Mm. Yeah. So the net result is the club is coming a little bit from the right side and then having to swipe across a little bit, a little bit exaggerated to hit the ball. Just maybe a little bit inconsistent of a way to strike. Not the worst that we've seen, but a little bit off. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, from there, we'll also check the driver too, because I think that was the biggest, more bigger issue when it comes to the alpha. So we'll check that a little bit later in lesson. But for now, let's start with that. And then I have one other thing with the irons we'll talk about, but once we get past the uh, hand movement. Yeah, trying to get that exit left. Yeah. で、なんか
立ってきちゃうっていう感じなのかなと。Yeah, you know, so when it comes to sequence rotation, so if I rotate my body more and more and more and more,、mm. like he stated there, it would make it slightly easier for the hands to shift out and the、mm. shaft to steepen.、Mm. So, like he would say there, that's not necessarily him actually torquing the club through the、mm. grip end, it's more so kind of the body causing the shaft to pitch out. So, yeah, I think、um, sequence rotation could be something we talk about. But we're going to see what happens when I focus on the internal cue of the hand path.、Mm-hmm. I want to see if the body starts to fix itself with a different cue.、Uh, yeah, so we're going to focus more so on the force direction of the hands and then see if the body shifts naturally. If it doesn't and we start to kind of come up into a wall of resistance and the body's still wanting to spin on him, then obviously we'll talk about it. But we're hoping that we can. Not have to focus on two things and hopefully just one with a different cue with the hand path. We'll see. So, first of all, we need to focus on the shoe. Exactly, yeah. I always think the,、um, changing the direction of the hands and changing the direction of, kind of the wrist movements or kind of the torque you apply or force you apply through the hands is typically the easier option for most golfers to change. Like body parts are bigger parts with smaller range of motions, which is typically more difficult to move and control because it's such a small range of motion. Mm. 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 Mm.